What's going on everyone, my name is and welcome to our reaction video for Can You Beat Pokemon Emerald with only a Mudkip? Now, a lot of these videos have been going around the internet lately, Can You Beat Blank with only a Blank? I don't know if this is the original video, but I know Alpha Rad and makes some fantastic videos, and after I made the Pogatuba reacts to the first Nuzlocke video that you absolutely loved, so many people said that I should watch this video too. I don't do a huge amount of reaction videos on the channel, but doing a lot more lately because you seem to enjoy it, and I'm, you know, I'm here to give the people what they want. So, we're gonna dive into this. Of course, I'm gonna leave Alpha Rad's channel link in the description. He makes fantastic videos. I would highly recommend you go and check him out and subscribe to him if you haven't already. Also, if you are new to this channel, we do all sorts of Pokemon content here in the channel, not just reaction videos. We do shiny hunts every day on twitch.tv slash fires. And I post funny tweets on Instagram and Twitter too. I don't post tweets on Instagram. Sometimes I do actually. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Can you beat Pokemon Emeralds with only a Mudkip? Well, let's find out, shall we? Pokemon is all about catching them all. Well, I mean, it wasn't until recently. Anyways, I was just curious to how little yeah, you could explore in a game like Pokemon. I looked at Pokemon Emerald and wondered if it would be possible to go from receiving I just want to say I will be pausing the video periodically to give me thoughts on because it's a reaction video. I'm not going to sit here and just like be- I'm sorry, I'm not going to sit here and just watch yeah. it. I'm going to give my thoughts as well as to what is exactly going on, so. Becoming the champion without catching a single Pokemon. Ooh, the this animation is so nice. The to mind is what to do about the HMs that are required to traverse through the Hoenn region. A fun fact Always about got the, the HMs. eight HMs in this region is that only five of them are required, with three of them being water-based nice. moves and made sense of pick mudkip since he can also learn the other two required that are strength and rock smash I'm oh my really god much leeway on the catching pokemon thing if it's a legendary that's free xp and if it's shy, you know i've always thought that art for rayquaza was like really weird for some reason because it's uh it, it's it's not like not exactly really how rayquaza thing, art usually looks like this uh, for some reason this rayquaza art just looks really strange to me it's so odd but that's hey whatever XP, and if it's shiny you gotta kill it and that's just heartbreaking wait shut Wait, if it's shiny, you gotta kill it? Oh no. No way, I'm not gonna like where this is going. Our precious little Mudkip may leave a lot to be desired when it comes to his stats. The reason for this is that no rational human being would pick this set of stats over these, but that's where I come in and say, oh boy, I love an arbitrary challenge with an odd set of win conditions. Me too! I love that as well! I mean, we've been doing the one controller challenge, which is to randomize the locks with one controller. Why did I do that? That was a terrible idea. I shouldn't have started that. The heart of this challenge really stems from asking, could I instead of should I? And that's how we ended up here. Upon being gifted my Pikachu by Professor Did you call Birch, it Pikachu? I immediately went into the grass and started grinding. I beat my rival, talked to my dad- Oh my god! <laughs> I have to say, I love the animation for this. I know the uh, the anime was linked in the description. I think it looks fantastic. He focuses on work instead of me. Watch Wally learn what a Pokemon was, and then I made it to Petalburg Woods. Nothing interesting really happens here since it's just the path towards the rock gym, and let this serve as a reminder that I picked the water type Pokemon. Okay. Inside the gym, our little Pikachu had his first attempt at evolution, only to be denied no. by a single- No, son! You ain't growing up. You're staying a child forever. This is literally what's taking you to Peter Pan land. You ain't no growing up. You ain't no growing up? What's that mean? I have no idea. We might find Captain Hook along the way. Who knows? Press the B button. It really makes you wonder if being blue ballsed in the middle of your metamorphosis hurts, but I mean, <laughs> it'll get used to it since there's a whole lot of this down the road. The easiest- just, Bro, just grab an Everstone. It'll be fine. I don't- I, I'm pretty sure Everstone is in this game, so I think you can grab it at some point. I don't remember exactly where, though. The solution to this is to get an Everstone, but- <laughs> And there he says it, okay. Well, there we go. We have the two great minds think alike, apparently. That's boring. I'm just cheating. It's just this arbitrary rule I just made up. Anyways, Roxanne lost my already overleveled mud kid. We retrieved an old man's lost dog and then set sail on the- No, <laughs> an old man's lost dog. Oh, I like that. Uh -huh, boat. We then arrived in this granite cave and a mysterious hiker offers us Flash. We then walked off, looked at him over our shoulder and said, wow, thanks for nothing. The hard part about caves in this run is- that Can't use it! Also, the idea that a random hiker gives you Flash in a cave when you're 11 years old. Everything about this is starting to sound a little bit suspect, isn't it? you don't have Flash, which means you can't see and you have to walk through the caves by memory alone. Lucky for me, I played this game hundreds of times as a dumb stupid kid at the dumb stupid after school program in third grade because my real me life too. dad didn't have time for me. We then find oh. Steven, who oh, no. gives us I'm the sorry. first useless piece of oh, information no. for a Mudkip only user, which means it's now time to fight the second gym leader. I Get tried em. to fight every trainer I could in the building, but it wasn't enough for this underdeveloped Mudkip. So 
dunked on, which is funny. I always had trouble in the second gym too. For some reason, even though you can like go over to like sleep on, you can do so much training. I always had trouble in the second gym. I don't know why. Like you have to let me know what was the gym that you had the most trouble in in Emerald because it was like the seventh gym and the second gym that gave me the most trouble. It was the two S's. It was the seven and the second. So naturally, I resorted to bullying kids on the beach until that magically became naturally. enough to earn another gym badge. After that, we fought Team Aqua, beat our rival again somehow. Like, I really don't know how mm. I did this one. And then yeah. approached Mongo no, City. No, I, I had trouble in that, that gym battle as well. I usually had a lot of trouble with that gym. It was only, or that rival battle, that was the only rival battle that ever gave me, like, a little bit of trouble. But the, I don't know why it was. I don't know what was going on there. Help potentially the hardest part of this entire run the electric gym leader the balance of this in the hoenn region is that if you're going the water type your marsh stomps should already be half ground type by now thus being this immune is. to electric moves sadly <laughs> that is not how this story goes no. you really just have to allow your pokemon you to do pop it? as many pills oh. as you can before you Paralyze. run out of money don't do drugs kids your best bet is using mud slap a move with low power that lowers your opponent's accuracy but they only use shockwave which has a 101 percent accuracy so he's level 36 like, shit I'd like to say that I eventually won this battle through sheer willpower alone, but yeah. I'll be honest and say that the AI just messed up and hit me with the how instead of shockwave, which- That's how all this Pokemon challenge runs goes. It's literally just wait until the AI screws up. There's nothing you can do about it. Pokemon is a skill-based game. Although I will say that level 36 Pikachu is, is trying his best right now. Falls under one of the most we take those kinds of wins I've ever seen, but we take those. This gym badge allows us to use Rock Smash, which is an actual move we will hey, actually use. strength already? And then oh, use yeah. Rock Smash to get strength, and this there. is an actual move that we will even actually use. At nice. this point, you're starting to figure out that the Mudkip we carry is going to be void of an actual move set since we have to use all these HMs to navigate through Hoenn. You can go to the move deleter, sure, these delicious but to get through Victory Road, you need Strength, Waterfall, Surf, and Rock Smash. And we're lucky Dive isn't required, otherwise it wouldn't be possible. On our way to some story-related missions, we walk through the Fiery Cave, and there really isn't anything of interest over here except TMO6 Toxic hiding behind a boulder but we'll get to that later after that we how did he get there magma who put that there forest, and then fight the fourth gym leader who specializes in fire which again let me remind you that i chose the water pokemon upon yeah. receiving the fourth easy gym wins badge, boys puts us in a beeline towards the fifth one i definitely thought that this was going to be the gatekeeper for me norman's pokemon had all the tools to absolutely steamroll me and at this point i guess Spam i just really underestimated the growth Spam rock smash and then norman sent out slacking i was Spam worried about being sat on in a hilarious fashion by this humongous beast but then I remembered Slacking's ability. He can't attack every other turn. And yeah. my Mudkip was faster and new dig. Oh. After denying Oh, the dig strat. Okay. It's the same thing you could do with protect. You can completely nullify Slacking's if you have protect. It, it can't It can't touch you. It's so unfair. It's basically bullying. With Marshomp another chance to breathe, we took the HM Surf, got a Thunderstone for our dearest Pikachu, and then nice. progressed towards the <laughs> Weather Tower. Inside, Team Aqua bombards you with the exact same shit you've seen before and ultimately fails to overpower the strongest mudkip in existence. You would think that the weather employees would be grateful for you saving their lives and that's the problem. They are too yeah. grateful if you ask me. They uh -oh. offer to give you a reward for your troubles while stripping you of no. an option to decline. With that being said, we retrieve our second Pokemon of the playthrough and just like that, the run is dead. All right, hold on. Just because you get given a Pokemon doesn't mean the run's dead. Just throw in that bad boy in the PC and you're fine. I mean, we never caught a Pokemon, I suppose. It's not yeah. like I used a Pokeball for it. I suppose that I could just hide him in the box like a redheaded stepchild and hope he never sees what? a light. Hey! I take offense to that. <laughs> Don't you be throwing me into a box. Light of day. So with an additional skeleton in our closet, Steven Stone shows us another fun piece of useless information before we go into the sixth gym. I'll be nice. honest and say that these puzzles for toddlers took me a bit longer than I'd like to admit, but I eventually found my way through. Same. I debated on teaching my Mudkip Rock Tomb for no this gym alone, but I trusted my precious child to eliminate. Oh my God, they're all dead. Remember when I talked about Team Aqua earlier? Yeah, just imagine that again but this time with ghosts. Then imagine that again, but with Team Magma, and now rocks are around. The twist here about right. is you have to fight the leader of Team Magma, and during this fight, I kind of ran out of PP, so I thought using Dig oh, no. against his camera would be a fine answer. 
but oh, I was no, wrong. Oh no, the we earthquake! Got... You triggered my trap card! I love that. There is nothing more satisfying than hitting a digging Pokemon with an earthquake. It's like using Stone Edge on a flying Pokemon with Machamp or something with no guard, because no guard means that you always land your Stone Edges even if they're flying. Nothing more satisfying! We got him on the run back though, so let's just focus on the positive, okay? Our next objective was to return to Slateport, and since my Mudkip could not learn fly, no matter how many times I asked or how hard he tried, please, so ma'am, walk across the country. Just again. a crumb this of flying. This is just a pointless objective that activates the next event in Lily Cove, which is a painful process if you don't have the ability of fast travel. And since we were in Slateport, I thought we would surf over to the abandoned ship and pick up TM13 Ice Beam, and we're just gonna put that in the nice. back later. Nice. I well, I totally forgot the Ice Beam was there. I'm not gonna lie. I never even go back to that ship, ever. I, well, good strat. I would have forgotten that. Now returning to Slateport, I ran into a random encounter. Upon slaying another Tentacool, somebody asked me to fix a stream layout. As I was attempting to please a loyal oh, viewer- Oh, he, stre he streamed this entire thing. Okay, that's that makes sense. I don't know why that surprised me. He streamed this entire thing. Uh-oh. Wait, is what I think is gonna happen about to happen here? Are we about to see the, the run die in front of our very eyes? I realized that I made a grave error. It's just a, uh -oh. it's just a lighting error. It's a white balance thing. Uh -oh. It's like I can just slide uh -oh. one thing uh -oh. in here and make it work. Here it is. Like, oh, like run dead! Uh, oh no! Wait, wait. Yeah. So I turned the game off and went back to my last save, groaned loudly, and did it all over again. Backtracking yeah. nah, through no fair, time fair, was fair. as painful as it sounds, and then I picked up Toxic along the way, defeated Team Aqua again while picking up a Master Ball that is essentially worthless, and then we found our way- No, 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 it's not worthless! Please, please tell me. I don't know if he finds a shiny in this video, but if he finds a shiny and doesn't Master Ball it, I, it's gonna, it's gonna pierce my heart. My heart will be pierced, it'll be on the back wall, I'll be so sad. Back to Moss Deep. This gem served as a huge roadblock in our path because this gem clearly incentivizes double battles with its oh. design and theme and gem leaders being Tate and Liza, or Liza. Yeah, I'm just solo <laughs> the as double battle you make it gym. To the gym leader room, they turn you away if you only have one Pokemon. To battle oh, them, really? I have to catch another oh, Pokemon, okay. which would absolutely disqualify me from this challenge. Castform. But what if we had a certain albino metamorphosis love child to bring back out of He's hiding? Free. Surely this doesn't count as catching a Pokemon, and it's not like its inclusion really matters. You know, so I'm gonna assume, I'm just gonna pretend that uh, in my head canon that 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 is representing the ginger headed stepchilds of all over the world. So I'm happy that I could contribute towards this run not dying. He's just gonna die to Zatu Psychic. From oh, this no. point on, Mudkip easily won the 2v1 by spamming Surf the entire battle. And upon leaving the gym, I went out to go do what I felt was right and release Cast Form into the wild. No! Sometimes if you love something, you gotta let it go. I miss Cast Form already. But they refused. Back in oh, the box, he went really? and we went to assist Mr. Stone in a double battle. He was kind enough to allow me to choose any Pokemon I wanted, so I chose my Mudkip wow. and we washed the floor with these lackeys. With our journey- ha, ha, ha. Wash the floor with them? Cause, you know, the surf, sorry. Soon coming to a close, Steven finally did something of value and allowed me to teach my Mudkip a brand new HM, Dive. With this being our fourth nice. one, Mudkip looks no different than an HM Zigzagoon slave at this point, and nevertheless, we continued our journey to the eighth gym. But before I did that, I was surfing and ran into a Bro! Oh, come on! That's- I know exactly what's gonna happen here. I know exactly what's gonna happen here. It's gonna break my heart. It's gonna break my heart. After 20,000 Darkrai encounters, after the biggest shiny drought that I've ever, ever seen in my entire life, I can't look at this and not be heartbroken because I know ex- Go on. Shiny Tinnacool, laughed hysterically, and killed it in front of everybody. But I no! still forgot we had to go to the Aqua uh hideout, so yeah, we did that too. I'm then so sad. I just know I need a moment. I need a moment. Over twenty thousand encounters with Darkrai, shiny hunting every day. I just seeing a shiny die in front of my eyes like that. It's it's like it's like going into a desert with no water, and someone comes along and they have the tallest glass of ice cold pure H two O in front of you, and they just tip it out in front. Of, they just tip it out and they throw away the glass, and then they laugh at you. The Pseudopolis. They play a nice little cutscene while Wallace plays 20 questions about Rayquaza, interrogating me about their location as if a 10 year old with a mudkip had even heard of whatever that thing is. For whatever <laughs> plot convenience reason, we trekked up to meet Sly for the Sky Dragon and he instant transmission to somewhere random, I think. Since nice. I didn't want to attempt to imitate Final it by walking painfully slow, I just battled in the Sky Tower until my little mudkip couldn't handle it anymore. Since oh, Whiting no. Out just sent you to the last Pokemon Center you went to, it activated the next cutscene immediately. Rayquaza interrupts this fight that looks like a stare down. <laughs> 
just spawn. It activates the, the cutscene immediately, so you you spawn back in the Pokemon Center. So you have enough time to go in and get yourself healed up, and then as soon as you walk out, it's like, oh wait, the cataclysmic event is happening now. To tell Groudon that he got insanely counterpicked. I mean, he has this tiny piece of land, and Kyogre has this ocean on their side. He yeah, then man. threw in the white it's flag, which caused Kyogre to dive back into the ocean, and I don't really know where Groudon went, honestly. Anyways, after he seeing all bed. three of those monsters, this allows our protagonist to enter the final gym and succeed in these puzzles that I definitely remember being much harder as a kid. Wand doesn't really serve as yeah, too much of a challenge easy. for the beast that was created before your very eyes, but I thought it would be a very funny flex to throw a Master Ball at his truly beloved. He didn't appreciate the joke very much, and to be fair, I get it. It's not I'm really that funny. So with all eight gym badges in hand, it's our journey really now directs funny. us at Evergrande City, which is honestly just one building. And yeah. nice. But first, we Evergr have to go to the- Evergrande City has always been such a disappointment. Like, literally, Evergrande City. That is such a big dick baller name for a place that literally has nothing in it. Evergrande City. Game Freak, what were you doing? The move to leader in Ditch Dive and Learn Waterfall. Luckily, only four of the five required HMs are necessary to get through Victory Road. Oh, and we got some, that we got some true, good music on now. The just ended right here. Upon entering Victory Road, we are greeted with Wally trying to strike a pose, saying we can just fast forward through all of this. He never really served as much of a challenge to the superior species of Pokemon. Victory Road is a dark and scary labyrinth, and I wasn't really about to rely on muscle memory nor flash, so I just looked up a guide and counted step by step. Nothing really no, exciting. No, man, you need to spend at least 20 minutes kind of feeling your way through Victory Road like I did when I was three years old, and also I do now when I'm 23 years old. Actually, wait a minute, no. The game was not out when I was three years old. Never mind, I take that one back. Here, so we can just fast forward to the Elite Four. I stocked up on last minute supplies and sold my revive since we can't possibly use those. I called this a practice run since the moveset I was going on was full of low PP HMs with one of them being Rock uh -oh. Smash, which is a hilariously awful move. This definitely sounded Bro, much harder. You gotta be like level 100 for this. Level seven, I don't know if level 76 is gonna be good enough for this. Harder on paper, but Mudkip kind of tore through all of the first few trainers. We got Never to mind. Drake with only water Never moves mind. that are not very effective. Rock Smash is just not, and we didn't have any ice moves. Things oh, seem no, the kind ice of beam. hopeless. I decided to use an ether on strength, and that turned out to be the saving grace here somehow. Yes. Upon beating the Elite Four, we had one remaining challenge in our way. This Mudkip has been through so much. You we got all this, buddy. this adventure. You got and this, with buddy. with our journey finally coming to... Okay, we got Toxic stalled by Wallace's Molotic and lost. Okay, whatever. No! At this point, I decided that our moveset was not going to cut it. One of our moves did not even get used in the Elite it's Four. okay, it was practice run. And cover what we needed it to. With Toxic and Ice Beam still in my bag, I wanted to equip them to Mudkip, but... How? We made our way back through Victory Road, picking up a so much needed walk all the way back? up on the way, and arrived at the move to leader's house. After removing wow. half of their HM and getting did. Mudkip as close to a real move set as I possibly could, we set out to see and dive. You know, since this would warp our trainer back to oh, the Elite Four. Oh, and... wait. Oh, that's so smart. That is actually huge brain plays right there. Go and delete the HMs you need to get through Victory Road because you already have the Evergrande City Pokemon Center unlocked, so then you teleport back to it. Massive brain plays. The HMs required to get through Victory Road were no longer applicable. This time was going to be different. Each move was strategically picked for each trainer. A you lot got of this. Pokemon were dying I believe in this Pikachu. Stat bonus, you got this Pikachu. But we also had strength to cover the matchups with weak defense or who were strong to water. With everything in place, Mudkip was unchained, storming through trainer after trainer. Okay, and then Glalie just used self <laughs> This time for sure, after arriving at Phoebe's battle, I realized the last battle her Desclop exerts pressure, which is bad for my limited move pool. I also noticed that he opens with protect and would keep spamming it until one connected. Being that he could use this move two really? times, I decided that I would just buff Mudkip up as much That's as possible. Such weird AI. on the 11th term, the beefiest Mudkip you've ever seen slaughtered all of the ghosts. Look at those I abs, bro! for the next trainer since Mudkip lived in constant fear of being exploded on by a living snowball. When it there came it to is. Drake, the difficulty Watch of the out. last run went away since Ice Beam was the perfect tool to destroy everything Rome's he loves, there. which finally brought us back to Wallace. I took my time and beefed up against his Waylord, Ooh. which I feel like if that Pokemon... We got we got a layout for this one. We got a layout for this one, boys. Dynamite stadiums are going to collapse. With Ludicolo knowing Giga Drain, this could Ooh, serve as a huge problem. Being that Definitely I had a, a bad matchup. Used it, I just waited until he used the move five times and then ice beamed him down. Wallace's Tentacruel is by far the least threatening Pokemon he has, so this was just time to heal, buff up, file my checkbook, and mentally prepare myself for what was coming next. Melotic came out using Toxic, educating me that I've never said most of these Pokemon names out loud, 
loud, and little did they know, I could be toxic too. This fight went on for multiple minutes, oh, but no. Mark Gibb eventually found himself a victory somehow. Surprisingly, this wasn't the end. But after using Ice Beam, Wishcatch was Wish frozen, Cash? and at this point, it was just hard of the cards from there. With hey, Wallace attempting froze. to hold the throne and not lose to a 10 year old, he threw out Gyarados, but you already know how that went. So just meant to like be. that, Mudkip single-handedly became the champion of Hoenn's Elite Four. It was, it a was meant to be. Well done, mate. Well done. That must have been an absolute nightmare to get but through. His very fitting lonely nature led him to victory. A lot of people said He's that lonely. a Mudkip couldn't accomplish such a daunting task, but let this be a lesson to you. No matter how large the obstacle may be, if you believe in yourself, you can accomplish anything if you have a drugged up fish with legs by your side brilliant one thing that i thought was funny Absolutely during the credits brilliant. is that they really want to walk you down memory lane by showing you all the pokemon you caught and uh <laughs> So thanks for watching. This was definitely one of the more fun <laughs> videos to make. It takes a bit. Oh man, that was great. I, I love the storyline that went alongside that. It was really fantastic. Like that was brilliant. And also the animation, which was done by Nova One Juke was fantastic as well. Like I said, if you enjoy these kinds of videos, if you have more videos that you would like me to react to, uh, like I said, I, I, I'm totally down to do more if this is the kind of stuff that you want to see, but we do more than just reactions on this channel. We do Pokemon food videos. We do Pokemon mod videos. We do Nuzlocke, we do streams. We do challenges of our own. Like I said, we're doing the one controller challenge two random ice nuzlocks two games with one controller at the exact same time so go ahead and check out all of that stuff make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that like button if you haven't already thank you so much for watching we stream on twitch every single day at 11 a.m est and i'll see you guys make sure to check out alpha rides channel once again linked in the description and i'll see you guys next time bye Thank you so much to our Twitch subs and YouTube members of the day. Remember, if you are a YouTube member or a Twitch subscriber, that both gives you access to the sub Discord. And I appreciate you supporting the channel. Thank you so much, guys.